Hey everyone, John here from testprepinsight.com, and today I'm going to be discussing five crucial factors to consider before enrolling in an information technology degree program online. I know how disorienting it can be trying to decide among all the different online universities out there, especially considering how critical your education is and the impact that it can have on your career. But luckily for you, I'm going to cut through all the noise and really examine the crucial decision factors that truly matter. So that way you can figure out which IT degree program is the best fit for your unique situation. So if you're ready, let's get to it. All right, so before I dive straight into these factors, I should just mention up front here that if at any point during this video you feel like you need some more information, make sure to check out the description below. I'll drop links in the text below the video screen over to a bunch of helpful sources, guides, and resources. So you'll definitely want to check that out as you continue your research. Also, if you find this video helpful in any way, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and drop us a quick comment below. That'd really be appreciated. Okay, so let's get to it. So the first thing that you should do is actually take a step back and really take some time to contemplate what you want to do with your degree in information technology. In other words, what is your end goal? Is it to become a network architect, a software developer, a research scientist, a security analyst, database administrator? There are a ton of different options. The point is that you first need to narrow down what interests you or what niche you'd like to specialize in. This will help you figure out which IT degree program best aligns with your personal goals. That way, as you conduct your research, you can start to identify what I call X factors among all these different online universities and their degree programs. And by X factors, I'm talking about the distinct attributes, offerings, and curriculum that align with your objectives. So think different concentration options. Does the university offer an exact concentration for the career track you're most interested in? And how many elective credits are there as part of the degree track? That way you can really dig into the topic areas that truly matter to you. Or are there specific IT-related certifications that are integrated into the degree program so you can further upgrade your skills and resume? Or maybe your true intention is to earn a master's degree after completing your bachelor's. In that case, you'll likely want to check out online universities that offer accelerated bachelor's to master's pathways. Purdue University Global, which is a popular national online university, is a perfect example of this. Essentially, by earning a minimum grade in select courses, you can earn credits towards your master's degree in IT or cybersecurity management. That way you can complete both degrees in less time and at a lower cost than completing both separately. So the key takeaway here is that by thoughtfully considering your end goals and objectives prior to enrolling, it'll help you identify which programs might be a good fit for you and your career track down the road. All right, so the next factor is that you should become familiar with the admissions requirements and the application process. So online universities generally fall into one of two groups, either open enrollment or selective enrollment. Selective enrollment schools are the more traditional types of universities that probably come to mind when you hear the word college. I'm talking Princeton, Stanford, UCLA, etc. These types of universities typically have rigorous admission requirements. You'll likely need a minimum GPA, a high SAT or ACT score, and write a personal statement among some other requirements. So if you have an excellent academic background and you don't mind going above and beyond in order to get accepted into a top ranked IT program, then you might want to direct your attention to selective enrollment schools. But with that said, the acceptance rates at selective enrollment schools tend to be quite low. Suffice to say, it can be challenging trying to get accepted. Therefore, you might want to also consider open enrollment universities. These types of schools are ideal for students who might not have the strongest academic background or for people who might have been serving in the military or working full time for the past few years and are now looking to go back to school since the only admission requirement, depending on the program, is usually that students just have a high school diploma or GED. So if this type of admissions process is a better match with your background or individual circumstances, I would suggest checking out Purdue University Global. I'll be using them for example purposes throughout this video since they're a popular national online university. I'll go ahead and drop a link down below in the description over to Purdue Global so you can get a better idea for what the application and admissions process is like at an open enrollment college. Okay, so the third and quite possibly most significant factor to consider is tuition cost. How much is an online bachelor's degree in information technology going to cost you? And as you might imagine, there are a few components to consider here. The first thing that I would do is review the university's tuition per credit rate and the number of credits required for graduation. Doing some back of the envelope math will give you a good idea of the total cost to earn your IT degree. Typically, national online universities will require either 120 or 180 credits to graduate. And then as far as tuition goes, it normally ranges from around $240 per credit on the low end all the way up to $560 per credit on the high end. So this depends on the universities that you're considering, as well as other factors like where you live, whether you're an international student, a member of the military, and more. And then, on top of the normal tuition costs, online universities usually charge other fees and assessments as well that you'll definitely want to audit. These include technology fees, transcript fees, learning assessments, graduation fees, etc. 
Sometimes these auxiliary costs can really add up, so it's worth looking into prior to enrolling. Now, while we're on the topic of affordability, there are two more components to keep in mind. One is allowable transfer credits. You'll definitely want to research this if you have credits left over from a previous college or university. This is a great way to reduce the overall cost of your degree program. For example, at Purdue University Global, they allow students to transfer up to 75% of the total credits required for graduation, and the average bachelor graduate earns their degree in about two years. Of course, each online university has their own transfer policies and rules, so make sure to ask about this prior to enrolling. Now, the other component to look for here are trial periods. In some cases, online universities allow you to do a free trial run before dropping thousands of dollars in tuition. For example, once again at Purdue Global, they offer a no financial obligation three-week trial period. So essentially, you can enroll, audit classes for three weeks, get a feel for how everything works, and then decide whether to continue or opt out with no tuition cost, which I think is a pretty awesome option for students that are maybe undecided. For more information about how these trial periods work, check down below in the description. I'll have a link down there over to Purdue Global where they'll walk you through everything. Okay, so the next factor to deal with here is financial aid. And I'm not referring to student loans here because really pretty much anyone can obtain a federal or private student loan for themselves. Instead, what's more important and compelling to look at is the average amount of institutional aid that universities provide to students. In other words, what percentage of new beginning full-time students receive scholarships and grants from the university itself, not third-party sources? And what is the average amount of that aid? This will give you a good idea of your chances of receiving funds from the university to help reduce the overall cost of earning your degree. And yes, believe it or not, this information is publicly available. You can actually get this data directly from the U.S. Department of Education. So I'll go ahead and drop a link down below in the description over to the U.S. Department of Education's website so you can check out what the data is for the specific university that you're most interested in. Okay, so before we move on from financial aid, I also want to mention that some national online universities also offer different incentives and promotions to keep students motivated after they first enroll. Typically, these incentives are called something along the lines of progress scholarships or welcome grants. And essentially how they work is that if you stay continuously enrolled at the university and check off all the other basic eligibility requirements, schools will often reduce your tuition rate in order to keep you energized and on track to earn your degree. And the other item I would recommend you investigate are tuition locks. Some online universities lock in the tuition rate for the duration of your degree program when you first enroll. That means there won't be any annoying tuition increases in years two, three, or four. So definitely make sure to ask if one of these options is available to you during the application process. All right, so the final factor on my list today that you should consider prior to enrolling is program format. But before I cover that, I should mention that every single month here at Test Prep Insight, we actually give away a $500 scholarship to one lucky subscriber just as a way of saying thank you and to help ease the financial burden of higher education. It's super simple to enter. I'll drop all the details down below in the description, but just know it takes like 10 seconds to enter and hey, you never know, you could win $500 to help pay for your IT degree. Okay, so back to program format, aka how these universities structure their curriculum and schedule. In my experience, most online degree programs fall into one of three categories. Short accelerated terms, traditional terms, and self-paced. So in that first category of short accelerated terms, some online universities feature five to six week terms in which students take one course at a time or sometimes two courses max. The pace of each course is quite fast, but the nice thing here is that you only have to focus on one class at a time. You don't have to juggle three or four courses at once. So if you're the type of student who doesn't multitask well or you have issues staying organized and on schedule, then this type of program format might be a solid fit for you, assuming you have the free time for a compressed schedule. Now, the second type of format is the more traditional college experience that you're probably accustomed to, in which you take two to five classes per term. This is your typical quarter or semester system where terms usually last anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. I'd say the bulk of online universities fall into this category. So if you're looking for a more conventional schedule, even if part-time, I would focus your research towards these types of program formats. Purdue Global, which I've mentioned several times already, follows this format. They offer 10-week terms in which each program requires a weekly commitment of around 15 to 18 hours on average. Again, the link for Purdue Global will be down below in the description. They have some helpful information on their website regarding how their courses and terms are structured, so you can get a better feel for this type of program format. Okay. So last up here, I want to cover the self-paced learning formats that seem to be picking up momentum in recent years. Basically, with these types of program formats, you can take courses at your own pace and move into the next course whenever you're ready. So if you want to tackle multiple courses at a time and move through the degree program as quickly as possible, you can, in as little as 18 to 20 months in some cases. Or if you have other responsibilities like a full-time job or young children at home, and you only have a few free hours per week, you can slow it down and study at your own pace. So bottom line, if you're super busy or have a crazy chaotic schedule that's constantly changing, this type of self-paced program might be a good fit. And sometimes there's schools that offer both types of degree formats, Purdue University Global being one of them. You can earn your IT degree by following the classic path that I just covered a minute ago where there's 10-week terms, 
or for select students, Purdue Global offers what they call their Excel track, which is a perfect example of the self-paced degree format where you're in the captain's chair. And that about does it for this video. I know making a decision about something as crucial as your education is extremely difficult, so I hope I was able to provide some helpful advice around online universities and give you some guidance in finding an IT degree program that fits your specific goals, budget, and learning preferences. Again, if you want to learn more about online IT degree programs, be sure to check out the description below. I'll have a bunch of helpful information down there for you, including guides and resources related to scholarships and financial aid for you to check out. Also, if you're interested in another degree area outside of information technology, be sure to check out the rest of the videos on our YouTube channel. We have a ton of helpful content related to higher education. But anyways, as always, thanks for watching, best of luck, and I'll see you in the next one.